What's up, Seahawks? Welcome back to Seahawks Central News. I'm Sydney Bouchel. And I'm Patrick Kogan. Today we're going to be talking about Hurricane Florence, what's happened, and what our fellow Seahawks have experienced over the past month. We have a lot to share, so sit down and stay tuned. Because Seahawks Central News starts right now. To start things off, let's talk about the storm itself. Florence ended up being the wettest hurricane ever in the Carolinas and the first major hurricane of the season. It reached Category 4 strength just before being downgraded to a Category 1 before it made landfall. A mandatory evacuation was enacted for many people in the neighboring communities, and UNCW evacuated everybody that could not do so on their own to Asheville. The storm's effects were felt long after the storm left, which took some time as the storm stalled to moving less than 5 miles per hour inland. The amount of water that fell crippled much of the infrastructure in the southeast region of the state and Wilmington itself was essentially turned into an island for the span of two weeks with all roads in the city covered by floodwaters. The power in the city slowly came back with power being nearly fully restored two weeks after the storm had passed. By the end, a nearly $140 million of damage was reported at UNCW. UNCW's Dobo Hall, which is full of scientific instruments and samples, being all but completely destroyed, ruining years long of scientific research. During the storm, the roof of the building was compromised and water ruined a lot of the electronic equipment. Chancellor Sardarelli wrote in an email that, quote, while damage was extensive, it is not irreversible. Water damage also affected many of the students living on campus. Dorms across campus flooded and their rooms were worked on leading up to the return to campus. Unfortunately, this opened up a new problem as many people in our campus community have reported thefts to the campus police since they've come back. WECT says that 36 reports of theft have been reported before October 9th. The campus apartments have been closed indefinitely with the news that students living there would be moved to different rooms where they could be found. To talk about this, Hannah Creech is in the studio. Thanks, Patrick. On Friday, October 12th, around 400 students received news that their apartment would no longer be theirs. After two weeks of assessing the damage of the university apartments, UNCW announced that the buildings will not be reopening anytime soon and students need to find other permanent housing options. Freshman Tiffany Paganello has been staying off campus with friends and says it has been a struggle every day. It is extremely inconvenient. Um, just because it's a 35 minute drive without traffic to even get here, I get free food here all the time, which I can't at the apartment that I'm staying at. Um, gas money has been really expensive and I've been living in this like same clothes for a month now because I'm living out of a book bag. They've been very vague and I don't know, I feel like if they would have handled the situation a long time ago, we wouldn't be in the situation we are right now. The university made this decision because, quote, we simply could not leave students and their parents in limbo any longer, wondering when they would move back in and potentially having the date pushed back repeatedly, end quote. Paganello and freshman Catherine Christopher have differing opinions on how the school has handled it. I think they could have done a better job with letting us know the apartments weren't ready, but I think they're doing what they can now. UNCW is currently working with students and parents to figure out their new housing situations. With many of the students living in the apartments being freshmen, this is a rough start to their college career. Sydney? Thanks, Hannah. Members from across our campus community were affected by the hurricane. Our international students were left without class and access to the campus for nearly a month. Our very own Isabella Bailey is here to tell us more about what the storm meant for these students. Our international students were placed with the difficult task of finding a place to stay during the evacuation. Many could not return to their home countries and have no family living in North Carolina. At least nine international students were sheltered at UNC Asheville while others stayed with friends. We spoke to Kai Gardner in the Office of International Programs about their challenges preparing students who had never experienced a hurricane for Florence. Uh, a lot of our international students had never really experienced a hurricane before. Uh, depending on what country they came from, they might have um, dealt with tsunamis or any other kind of natural disaster but no one really knew what to expect with a hurricane until our office reached out to them <clears throat> and let them know, hey, you know, this is a hurricane-prone area and this is kind of what happens with a hurricane. The thought of being hit with a natural disaster while studying far from home is really frightening. Hopefully these students were able to make the most of the situation. Patrick? Definitely. Thanks, Isabella. Some students were busy during September. A handful of UNCW students took it upon themselves to start their own fundraising campaign across the state. We Will Rebuild started on social media and quickly grew near 10,000 followers on Instagram alone. While the idea of a student-led relief effort for our community sounds wonderful, the truth of the matter is that We Will Rebuild has been unable to accomplish the relief efforts they set out to achieve. 
The donation drives across the state were incredibly successful. They've raised over $10,000 on GoFundMe, and their t-shirt sales profits, 100% of which are going towards relief efforts, have grown over $2,000. Unfortunately, maybe to a du due to a lack of experience, the group has been unable to get the vast majority of relief supplies to those that need them. Two moving trucks worth of supplies made it to Wilmington on September 30th, and that's it so far. While this amounted to over $5,000 in relief to Wilmington residents, there are still more donations collecting dust in High Point, North Carolina. I talked with one of the founders of the group, Jasmine Van Scoy, about the warehouse. In our more central location, High Point, we currently have two tractor trailers full of donations, so about 40 pallets of stuff. About Each pallet's probably about six or seven feet high. They're working with partnering with a moving company to get the goods here, and are looking for a warehouse to store and distribute them on their own downtown. We love to support people doing good work, and we'll be sure to follow up on this story as the group continues their relief efforts in the community. This past week served as a good reminder that we aren't quite out of the woods yet when it comes to hurricane season. Hurricane Michael came with classes being canceled after 1 p.m. last week. While Wilmington was only subject to wind and rain showers, further inland there were over four inches of rain. This came after the storm ripped its way up the east coast where it originally made landfall in the Florida Panhandle. Michael was an incredibly powerful storm and it resulted in over 10 fatalities before it left. The Atlantic seems to be calming down with fall rolling in, so we might just make it out. Well, that's it for us. Don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe to UNCW Teal TV on your favorite social media platform. If you have story suggestions or want to talk about the show today, drop us a comment. For Seahawks Central News, I'm Patrick Hogan. And I'm Sydney Bouchelle. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.